So I see this ad, I click on it, and I'm, I'm going through the sales funnel, and I was like, holy shit, like, everything just started making sense with what these guys are doing, because like, reading up on all these Russell Brunson click funnel stuff, and like, trying all these paid media, and I was like, man, these flashlights are like, two, three dollars USD, like, I know that, and then, you know, these guys are selling them for like, a hundred bucks, and I was like, that's fucking crazy, you know, I was like, why would people pay a hundred bucks, but then I thought like, if you, if like, if most of that money goes to like, your media spend, like, you could probably get enough conversions to like make a profit and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, just thinking about it more. And I was like, shit, like that's how these guys are doing it. You know, it was like such aggressive marketing funnel. And I was like, hmm, I'm going to try selling flashlights. So I jumped on and I was Hello and welcome to a very special episode of The Robust Marketer. This is our first episode back after Christmas and after Affiliate World Conference, our first podcast uh, live in 2018. It's also the first podcast you I've ever done with someone actually in my studio here. Uh, today we are super lucky to have James Petrellis from Direct Offer Club. I met James when he came to the Facebook Elite Retreat, which was the mastermind that we held after um, Facebook Mastery Live in Bangkok when we were in P Phuket. And right away I could tell this guy was legit. Uh, and and I think he felt the same because shortly after we ended up meeting uh, just sort of randomly in Las Vegas, uh, having a good time there. And then he even decided to come all the way to Victoria. And he's had a series of adventures that I cannot get into on the podcast. But we've uh, also <laughs> continued our amazing talks that we had um, all about the future of e-commerce, uh, the role of affiliates in, in the e-commerce game. I'm really excited to have this conversation for all of you here today as the first podcast of 2018. So welcome to the Robust Marketer, James. How are you doing? Thanks, Eric. Doing very well. Okay. Happy to be here in Victoria. So let's just figure out how we're going to sit here, first of all, on this on this sort of casting couch. Sorry yep. about that. Uh, but uh, why don't we start by telling the audience about your uh, your sort of marketer's journey? Okay, cool. So, um, <clears throat> so I've been in e-commerce for about five to six years. Um, I... Actually, if you want to go all the way back, if you're going to do the whole thing, we'll like start from scratch. Might as well. Um, I started my first e-commerce business when I was 15 in high school. Um, I was selling home security alarms on eBay, um, which is which is kind of weird and random yeah. for a 15 year old. But um, my dad runs a little like security installation company, so I would buy alarms from his suppliers and then sell them on eBay. Um, and at the time, I was working at uh, Burger King, or in Australia, it's called Hungry Jacks. So I was making $5.90 an hour and um, I was working maybe like 30 hours a week like after school and like doing that whole thing. And then, um, yeah, then I started this little eBay business and like well, I was making like within within like two weeks, I was making around $800 a week in profit. And I was like, shit. And I was in high school and like I was just in class and I, like, I couldn't concentrate. Like I couldn't even, I didn't care what these teachers were telling me because I'm like, you guys are probably making less money than me right now and I'm sitting here in class. Like it was crazy. Um, so that's what got me the bug. That's what got me like really excited about like online marketing and making money on the internet and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I did that for like my last couple of years of high school and it was like up and down. I ended up getting all these competitors jump on board after a while. And then, um, the problem with eBay and like places like eBay and Amazon is like everything just becomes a price war. So unless you are the cheapest, like for most things, like you're pretty much like, that's it. So people um, just sort by least expensive. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's like a commodity type thing. Totally. So, so that didn't really work out. Um, after a while, I just I, I probably you know if I know what I know now, I would have made it work. But um, <clears throat> so yeah, that ended up dying down. Um, then I ended up like working a uh, couple of jobs. Like I worked with my dad for a little bit. I worked in a um, in like a cell phone store. It's called Vodafone. I learned a lot about like sales and like being a lot more like open and being like a better person from that whole role because it was just like constantly like we earn like commission on sales so it was yep. constantly like cold approaching customers and making that happen and building a it, relationship it was, yeah building a relationship short basically, time, yeah. basically like learned sales and just yeah. like got like he's more confident as a person stuff like that so that was a really good experience and then um I started my first e-commerce like proper e-commerce business I guess um back in 2013 and uh it was a detox tea company um <laughs> nice at the time like Greta like Greta, exactly right. Yeah, so it was basically uh, inspired by Greta to b build this business. And um, it was a time when there was really not many brands on Instagram. Like, I mean, Greta rose, like, with she had a company called Skinny Me Tea. And that was, I think, like, literally one of the first, like, she was one of the first people to actually do this on the whole platform. Um, 
And at that time, it was really, really easy to make money as a brand promoting yourself on Instagram. Um, there was so many very, very popular accounts, like people with 10,000 followers, 50,000 followers, a million followers, and all these people were like getting, um, getting hit up by people like us, uh, getting offered you know, free products and payments to do sponsored posts. And that became a thing very, very quickly. And it was very, very profitable for everyone. So it was, um, you know, within like, we had this little thing kind of running on the side for like, it was probably like close to a year, right? Where we did nothing. Like it was just me and a business partner. We had like zero involvement. We just, we, we couldn't really be, we had, our, we had another thing that we were doing full time and this was like a little side project. And then um, it just got to the point where we we're like, hang on, like we should really dedicate time to actually, like there's so much money on the table here and we're just like, we don't even care. So what we did is like me and my business partner were like, let's sit down for like at least six to seven hours a day and just like figure out the whole Instagram influencer thing. Um, and from the day we started that to the, like within the first month, I think, we went from like a hundred dollars of sales a month, like you know, it was like a nothing business, to doing four thousand dollars, and then the next month we did a day. Uh, no, no, up for the month. For the month, okay. And then the next month we did fourteen thousand. The next month we did thirty thousand. The next month we did nice. fifty, sixty. Um, Amazing. And then yeah, and then at the time it was like the, the margins were ridiculous. Like we were making, I think at the time it was like eighty to nine. Oh, uh, wasn't it? It was like eighty. It was around eighty percent, like net. And this margin. is just on influencers. This is just with influencers, yeah. Because it was a time when you could like message someone that has 150,000 followers and tons of engagement and be like, hey, we love your account. We want to send you free product. All we want is return is like, if you like it, put up a post, tag us, and that's it, Yeah. right? And um, Or if you do like three or four posts throughout your like detox journey, you know, and like let your followers know the results and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, yeah, like we would email... We knew that if someone posted, like we'd make money, right? Like you couldn't really track everything properly, but like you'd see that when a post goes up, if you look at the times of our sales and when the post went, post was up, like you'd see the spike in sales. So like yeah. we knew that worked. So we're like, well, I guess like the, what you should do when you're starting a business, I think is like 80, like even like 90% of your time should be spent on a revenue generating task. So yeah. we're like, all right, fuck everything else. Let's just do this like from morning till fucking night, right? So we were emailing, I think like it was like a hundred influencers a day each. Wow. Probably more than that. Like manually. Stuff. Manually. Just right? hammering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's all for automation and yeah. like outsourcing and that stuff. But I, I very strongly believe that when you're starting, like you have to do the shit yourself. You figure out the best way to do it. And then once, once you've like optimized it, then you can... Yeah. You know, Systematize it or even or, or put it, yeah. it out to someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly right. But, it, yeah. But, but like make it effective first. Yeah. Right? Because like there's a difference between efficiency and effectiveness. That's true. And like being efficient would be like, cool, like my time is valuable. Like I want to outsource this to someone else. But if I'm outsourcing like an ineffective task, yeah. then like it's, it's you know, you're not yeah. going to get the results. Right? Exactly. So yeah. So we just sat there for like weeks on end, just like emailing, 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 like optimizing the way we message them and our process and like when we ask for their address and all these things to get like the best results from every email we sent. Um, but it was good. At the time, we are getting like over 50% uh, of emails we sent would end up in an influencer posting about us. Right? Back then, how were you... And how this was without actually... payments. We were not paying, like we didn't pay anyone anything. You just the sent them products. Yeah, like the first year was like just sending product. How did you get their emails? Are they Were they built into their <laughs> profile at that point? Because you couldn't them... DM either at that point, could you? No, you could DM. You could DM, but, like, okay. So we we DM'd as well, but we would... Um, yeah, so if the email address was there, we would email them straight up. If it was uh, not there, we would DM them asking okay. them for their email address. Okay, gotcha. Um, both were effective. The, the problem was like with DMing, like it was limited to like 30 every few hours or okay. so. So like you'd have to be really careful. Yeah. And we didn't want to get our account shut down and stuff like that. So we're really particular. But um, yeah, that so that like kind of changed our lives. Um, <laughs> so basically, like before that, we, we had this other little business. We used to do like um, audio visual installation. So we'd install like home cinema projectors, yeah. TVs and stuff like that. That's time for money. Time for money. Time for money. Yeah, You're not going to get rich very, very hard way. to scale. Yeah. Um, and and it, just, it was a bit of a broken business model in the sense that like most of our revenue came from wall mounting TVs and that requires two people to do yeah. and it only make like a $200 profit per job. Yeah. So it was good for us, right? It was mostly cash. Cash so in like, your pocket, yeah. We would literally just go like do like three, four jobs a day, get $200, like, get $100 per job each in our pocket, Yeah. right? And then go home and just like watch TV for the rest of the day. It was like an easy life. Yeah. But then, um, then yeah, got over that. I got sick of like crawling in roofs, roof spaces and like breathing in insulation and running cables and all this 
shit. And I was like, no, we're smarter than this. Like, yeah. we're so much smarter than this. We can, we can, you know. Anyway, so what, what happened with this, like, Instagram brand that we built was, like, we ended up making, like, we didn't have to, like, be anywhere. Just, like, work off our laptop. We, we used to do our own fulfillment. Eventually, we got someone else to do that. Yeah. Um, sorry, you were going to say something. No, I, I was going to say, I remember when you told me your story when we were walking on the beach, there was some, there was, what was the aspect of it where you were sort of down to your last? I'm getting to that. You're next. getting to that. Sorry. <laughs> so, the, so you already went up yeah. and there's still a. This is what's oh, so much okay, worse, okay, right? Because okay. like, so, all right, so I'm like rambling a bit, but basically no. um, the, the brand was called Bar and Body. Um, and it's funny because we're talking about it, right? Like most yeah. people like now everyone's talking about like, shit, you got to build brands. You got to get away from direct response. Yeah. I kind of like did the opposite and I'll explain how and why, but so, um, we'll probably, yeah, we're making like, I think the average, we're probably making about a 30 to $40,000 profit per month. Um, so we're paying ourselves like really nice wages. We're living in awesome apartments, like ridiculously awesome places in like best parts of Melbourne and just like traveling a lot. And it was like a really easy lifestyle, like printing money. And we're just like, you know what? Like. I mean, that's, that's not like crazy money like these days, but like being in this affiliate world. And, and well, how old were you at this time? You're 20. I was 20. Ooh, how old was I? I was probably like 24. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. And um, so it was, it was amazing, right? Like it was basically like all I wanted to do in my life was like have an online business and like, yeah, make money online, be able to travel, do all those things. So in my mind, I'm like, like we've made it. Like, you know, yeah. we've made it, right? Like this is it. This is done. Um, but we got lazy because it was like, it was just way too easy to... To, well, like with our eyes closed we're like this is just a, such a simple system yeah and it just worked and like the overheads were like nothing and you're still just mailing influencers manually New yeah influencers, point, and yep. you're maintaining yep. the relationship with the other ones yeah. or, or are yep. you sort of churning them at that point we're doing a lot of churning yeah. but at the same time there were certain ones that worked well um, that we'd like keep hitting up and then like reusing nice. them so and people would like be doing a journey like how long were the us? journeys like, um, would people be posting about this for a month at a time or was between it like... two weeks? We had a 14 day and a 28 day. Okay. So it was like, um, yeah. So it was usually like over a period of a month, they'd, we'd ask them to make four posts over a period of a month. Yeah. Um, so look, we, we didn't like, there's other people that did this whole process, like a lot better than we did. Mm. Right. But we were just like, fuck it. Like it's, yeah. it's making more like we didn't, whatever. Right. We got lazy. It was easy. So essentially what ha- started to happen in that space was like so many more brands started coming to the picture. There's all these like, um, like cough, like Frank, I don't know if you guys remember like Frank body is like his coffee scrub that just went crazy yep. in Australia and the U S and, yep. um, same model. Um, just really good, really good messaging, really good branding. It just imagery, like imagery, was, like, yeah. style, like those guys like have absolutely nailed it. Um, and there was like, but basically what was happening was like, I think at one point I could, I could probably count like 200 different, uh, detox tea companies, yeah. right? Like running posts on Instagram. So what happened was all the influencers, good and bad influencers, were getting hit up every day, right? Like all these different brands, all these different products, and they couldn't keep up. They're like, well, I can't put up twenty fucking posts in one day of twenty yeah. different products, and I don't need twenty detox teas. Yeah, exactly. You know? Right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Free products. So, so they were like, one, like we're gonna start charging for this shit because yeah. obviously it's like worth something. So people that used to post for free were like, oh, well, now I charge fifty dollars a post, or a hundred dollars a post, or two hundred dollars a post. Um, and we're like, okay, cool. We're just going to adapt to the time. Like our margins are big, but if we, you know, if we go from an 80% margin to a 20% margin, but if we're doing like tons more volume, then yeah. who cares, right? So, so we started doing that. Um, and then we kept going. And what we didn't do was we didn't like diversify into like additional products and like monetize our existing customers with that brand. Okay. Like we had like organic, like, like we didn't even like do, re- we had no retargeting back then or yeah. anything, right? And um, so like, People would come back naturally. Like we used to have like a thirty, like thirty percent of customers would come back and rebuy wow. on their own without us even like asking them to. Um, which I guess was a good thing about having like a, a really big, good Instagram following mm-hmm. is because like they're browsing their Instagram page and they keep seeing your posts. So I guess when they run out, they're reminded and they come back and, yeah. and buy. So um, yeah, that was good. But we didn't like, like I said, like you know, we were selling the tea for like thirty bucks, and then there was no like real upsells. There was no real follow up. It wasn't, yep. you know, we didn't do any of that stuff. And then, so what ended up happening is because we like wasted so much time not doing any of that, it got to a point where we're basically like making like our margin just got thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And then because um, your LTV wasn't, wasn't growing. Yeah. And it was the same time. Exactly. Right. right? LTV is like literally everything this side of the game. Yeah. Um, and then 
what happened was Instagram also started like changing their algorithms and like posts would get less reach and they started Instagram ads. It was that time. And what happened there was it went from like a chronological system essentially where mm-hmm. it would just sort of, you'd see the posts that were in the in real time sort of. Yep. And then it went to a system that was algorithmic where it would test your posts to a small subset of your audience. Yeah. And depending on the engagement in that yep. time, it would then go big or not. Yeah, exactly right. And I don't know if this is just like a conspiracy theory or not, but like we were certain like sponsored posts, like we, um, like sponsored posts. If you look at like an influencer's page, sponsored posts would get less engagement than organic their organic posts. Yeah. And it was like two reasons. Like one, like people were getting overseen fucking T posts, so they didn't like them or didn't care about them. But two, I think like Instagram's algorithms would actually like detect sponsored posts and they started like giving them less reach, like as okay. they were releasing their ad platform. Um could be true, could be not true. I don't know. Love but, conspiracy uh, theories. I think either way, more than anything, like the the like reality was like people were getting over it. Um as in like Instagram users were just no longer they were kind of blinded to sponsored post ads yeah um so everything just got more difficult got to the point where we're basically making like very thin margin um uh, basically no margin and then um we were just in this little rut right like we were just stuck like couldn't really like we're not creative like yeah we're more data guys like we, were, we couldn't really just like excel in the like social brand space like frank body and stuff we're doing and we're just like and we're just honestly we're just lazy it was pure laziness yep. and then it crept up on us to the point where it was too late to fix like it went past the point of no return and we were like shit we're kind of we're kind of fucked right now like yeah we got to the point where like we had um we had kept we kept money in the business account for like tax and stuff like that yeah which is something you should all do because there will be a tax bill like you gotta make sure you like, even for crypto holding Crypto, everything. <laughs> like, make sure you know exactly how much tax you need to pay and, like, make sure you have that money. Um, Death so, and taxes, the two certainties, right? Exactly right. So don't, exactly don't fuck right. around with the tax man. Yeah. So, we, you know, we were holding money for tax and stuff. And then, like, so, like, it was always in the back of our mind. And then, like, as this started happening, we're, like, losing money. We're, like, trying to invest money in, like, certain types of influencers and posts and ads and stuff. We started, like, burning through that money, right? So, it got to the point where, like, we had, like, we were barely, like, pulling, like, income in. We had to, like, drop our wages and, like... We were like just getting by. And it was diminishing all the time. Diminishing like big time. And then, um, so like I knew I was like, okay, so like next month we're basically like broke as shit. I don't know what to do right now. My business partner was in the same position. He like, he was like, he had given up. He would like literally like just stay at home and like sleep all day and like wake up and, and like wasn't doing anything. Like I wasn't doing anything. We're, like we're trying, like we wanted to, but we yeah. just like, we're just lost. We're like drowning. And then, um. Yeah, it got to the point where I'm like, shit, I'm going to end up owing like $150,000 to the tax department, which we don't have right now. And then our business bank account got to the point where it was like nothing. And then I had a business credit card. It was, sorry, a personal liability business credit card. Um, And we had used that for like bits and pieces like over the years. And we kind of like would pay off the little like repayments. We didn't really care about it, but it was there. And it was a $10,000 limit and it had like maybe three or $4,000 left. So I started playing with that um, in, and I thought like, I said to my business partner, I was like, you kind of like focus on the Instagram stuff, but like there's a, there's like world of people making money online, not on Instagram. Yeah. Like direct response, like banner ads, AdWords, like Facebook, like whatever, right? Like paid ads, trackable shit. Yeah. You know, affiliate stuff. Like I remember like I knew about affiliate marketing. I was like 14 when I heard about yeah. like ClickBank or whatever and all that shit. And I was like, you know, there's like, I want to get, I need to figure this shit out, right? So I'm like, you fo- you focus on running what we're doing and then I'll try some new things and, and see how we go. So I started um, learning more about sales funnels and instead of having like an e-commerce site, um, like a branded e-commerce site, I like switched over to click funnels and I started building landing pages and stuff like that um, for the T. And I started running Facebook ads and I was getting conversions and stuff like that, but it just wasn't like, I couldn't scale it. I couldn't like, I just couldn't get it to be like super profitable like it was with Instagram and yeah. also like we're running out of time. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like I don't... Like, You're literally on borrowed money at that point too. I'm on borrowed money, yeah, right? Yeah. Like I don't even have like, I don't, every day is like a massive problem, right? Yeah. So then like I would go to the office, like try a bunch of shit. It wouldn't work. I'd go home. I'd stress about it at night. I'd wake up and I'd be like, oh, like I gotta go and do this again. Yeah. Like go to the office, like buy ads, fail lose more money because you weren't changing enough you know what i mean you weren't you weren't refreshing you weren't like it was sort of like just going yeah hard at the same thing exactly right and like i was also like in my mind i'm like shit i'm like failure i'm like trying to like 
deal with all that and then like going in and then like actually physically like physically failing at what i was trying was like reinforcing that and i was like this is really fucked up like it's it's a different story if like you're if you've never made any money online and you're trying to get into that space and like you're at you have nothing and you're like trying to build it and figure it out it's like it's an exciting time yeah but if you've kind of been there making money and then and then you lose all that and you lose the ability to do it that's like a whole new level of of fucking shit rock bottom and just over time yeah having it drift away from you yeah, and you're exactly. not being, like, over the course of months I guess yeah, over the course months. of yeah. yeah yeah it's like months right and then it's just like yeah you get to this point where you're like it's just the worst feeling because I was just like fuck maybe I should have listened to my parents and like gone to fucking university or like got on a normal job stayed and, installing television <laughs> yeah or exactly or like just like yeah like stuck to one thing that's like yeah. gonna get me like a consistent like guaranteed income yeah, yeah. and all those things and I was like I, like all my friends from high school are like, you know, they have jobs. Like they, they make their eighty thousand dollars a year. I'm like, why? Like, why didn't I do that? Like, I, I really fucked up. And um, so yeah, it was a really shitty time. And then um, it, it got to the point actually where like, I was like, I never knew what like a panic attack was or what like anxiety was back then, but it like it fucking just hit me. Like, I don't know what happened, but like. I went away on this camping trip. We yep. spoke about this. Yeah, yeah. Went away on this camping trip. Um, came back. And when I came back, it was essentially like, just every, when I was away, like, because I was away from technology and everything, like everything just kind of like, that all like bottling up. It just hit me, right? And I just had this massive panic attack. And then- Because um, it's like when you're in the day to day, you can always yeah. propel yourself forward. You're always yeah. getting more dopamine hits and you're always like, but I can imagine that you disconnect, yeah. you go to the wilderness yeah. and all of a sudden yeah. it's just like- And all it, this financial stress and everything. It, it and then just it, I'm just out of the wilderness and then yeah. out of nowhere, it was just like, I just woke up like sweating in this massive panic. Sounds attack. like a walkabout. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was, it was fucked up. Yeah. And then, um, so I got back and I was just like trying to figure it all out. And, and like, I would walk to the office. Like I lived like a- 10 minute walk to my office right so i'd get up in the morning i'd walk to my office like almost shivering right and i literally like this happened like for days where like i'd get to the front door in the office and i'd be like i can't do this like i just i just got this massive like anxiety and i'm like i I gotta go home so i'd literally just turn around walk back home go upstairs go to my couch like put tv on and just literally like curl up in like the fetal position and lie there and be like, I'm so fucked. Yeah. I was like, I don't, like everything just, yeah, absolute worst. Dark times. Dark, dark, dark times. And, um, yeah. So then, um, but I, I just like pushed through, um, kept like playing around with click funnels and all this stuff like that. And then I realized like with direct response, like the brand doesn't matter. Right. So like, why am I still trying to sell a $30 tea product? Right. And that market had been saturated for like yeah, a long time. Yeah. It's been saturated. Yeah. Also, I'm like, I can like, you know, we had, I had like a ton of experience with product sourcing, like international fulfillment, yeah. everything involved. Like there's like, even though we're failing, like I have like a ton of like a wealth of knowledge from just from experience from running that business. Yeah. Um, where I was like, we like, I can, I can sell any product I want. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be anything. So, um, I just like happened to like, um, this is where it all starts. Right. Like I, I happened to come across a flashlight product, um, like a flashlight ad, sorry. Yeah. And, um, at the time, flashlight wave was big. It was just, it was everywhere. So, and as a kid, like I've always loved flashlights. Like I always wanted to have Lights, always basically awesome. lightsabers, right? Like, yeah, yeah. They're, just, they're amazing. Yeah, and like the smaller and more powerful they are, like yeah. the more excited I get. Like, yeah. They're just fucking awesome. So anyway, so I was looking at, um, I was like, you know what? Like I'd love to sell flashlights. It's, just, it's a fun, like, yeah. it's a cool little product, right? So I see this ad, I click on it and I'm, I'm going through the sales funnel and I was like, holy shit. Like everything just started making sense with what these guys are doing. Cause like, reading up on all these Russell Brunson click funnel stuff and like trying all this paid media and I was like, man, these flashlights are like two, three dollars USD. Like I know that. And then, you know, these guys are selling them for like a hundred bucks. And I was like, that's fucking crazy. You know, I was like, why would people pay a hundred bucks? But then I thought like if you if like if most of that money goes to like your media spend, like you could probably get enough conversions to like make a profit and blah blah. And I was like just thinking about it more and I was like, shit, like that's how these guys are doing it. You know, it was like such aggressive marketing funnel and I was like, hmm. I'm going to try selling flashlights. So I jumped on and I was like, I, I copied their funnel exactly like on click funnels. Like I just like saw exactly what they're doing and yeah. like every single pixel I like did the exact same thing. Yeah. Right? 
And, um, common affiliate tactic. Common affiliate tactic. Exactly right. Yeah. At the time, it was it was more like desperation. I was yeah. like, I just need like a, yeah. a win, like just a little fucking win. You saw right? the guiding light, you know? You yeah. Saw- <laughs> yeah. And um, my business partner he was saying is like, because I was talking about all the anxiety and stuff, and he was like, "When's the last time you had a win? Like in anything? Not just yeah. business, like in life, like in general. Like when's the last time you had like just just a, a little win?" And I'm like thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm like. Honestly, I, fucking, I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, would have been right. the big T days. It would have been the. Yeah, it was back then, right? Yeah. And since, and then also like all my focus was on like business. So like all my hobbies that I used to be into and all that shit like just disappeared. Yeah. So it was literally like when that failed, it's like life has failed. So that's like a piece of advice. Like don't put all of your eggs in one basket emotionally. Like have your hobbies like maintain. If you maintain can. like yeah. do things that you like. Like diversify like where you put your emotions. Um, at the same time, like if you if you are building something, like it does require, hundred percent incredible. Focus. This is like a like a paradox, yeah. I guess. You know, like there's on one hand, it's like diversify your emotions, like make sure you have different hobbies and stuff like that, so that if something does fuck up, like you've got other things that make you happy that you can like continue with. But on the other hand, it's like if you want to be successful building a business, like it does require laser one hundred percent. It focus. does, but I also find like even within those moments of like laser focus, like taking the time to go for me it's hockey I'll go play yeah. hockey or cricket or something and I'll make the time for those things and it's like during those times or even a walk or things like that yeah. I find like I'm able to think of you like know reset, reset and, yeah, exactly, and, yeah, yeah, yeah so exactly right I feel Definitely. some That's, kind of balance it's, it's funny so Paul important. J just did his, so his video on obsession that, yes uh, uh, and, yes, and yeah. uh, so, yeah. so that's that's when check exactly out Paul right. J Paul's yeah, yeah, video yeah, check that out. yeah yeah definitely um, yeah you gotta be obsessed like yeah. you have to be obsessed but like again like remember to like take the time to go for those walks do those things um, that's actually super important and I think that's something that like a lot of people in this industry don't think about or don't do yeah. as well um, there's like a lot of stress heads in the affiliate world yes. and I, I feel like yeah everyone should kind of like take a step back and, and go for those walks um, <laughs> definitely um, so anyway um, what was I at so click funnels started copying the hadn't had form. a win in a while hadn't had a win in a while um, and I was looking at the order forms right and like the order form on the, the page I was copying was like um, like the most popular one that was like there was like different options for quantities and like you know, the typical direct response thing was like buy three get two free and it was like $145 so it's like five flashlights for $145 and that's the most popular and then like one flashlight was like way down the list and it was like $56 or something and I was like that's stupid like how is that going to convert better than like having like the one flashlight at the yeah. top like obviously that's going to work way better right but then I was like you know what like Maybe these guys know something better than me because these are the guys that are actually fucking making money. Like I was looking at their on similar web, I was looking at what the what their traffic was, and it was like over a million visitors a month and stuff like that. I'm like, it's working. Like whatever the fuck these guys are doing, it's working. So I was like, alright, I'll do the same model. So I did that. Started running some Facebook traffic in Australia, um, and I got some conversions. And I was like, okay, like. It, it lit a little bit of a spark. I was yeah. still like, uh, we're way in debt. Like I'm not like, I got, I don't even have money to test Facebook ads right now, yeah. but I chucked in like a hundred, two hundred dollars maybe more in testing. I did like Facebook, um, Google, and I did like YouTube ads. Okay. Right? I was just like testing everything. Like yeah. I'll see what, what fits. And then, um, yeah, so like started getting some conversions and then I didn't even have stock. So I was like, oh, I got to fulfill this order. Like I got like two, three conversions. I'm like I got to fulfill these. So um, I already had found suppliers I use Alibaba, alibaba.com yep. for the most part. You usually have to buy high quantities um, with suppliers from there, but it's really easy because like they have English speaking yep. sales reps. Anyway, there's all different ways to source products. I just like using Alibaba. It works for me. Um, so yeah, I found a flashlight supplier. I got in like, I, I, okay. So at this point I literally had like 500 bucks left on this credit card. So I bought like $300 worth of flashlights and we're still making sales with this tea business. Mm-hmm. So it was still like, dripping in some money like okay. here and there but essentially we're down to like definitely under a thousand dollars at this point right and that's it and like i was literally like a month behind on my rent for my apartment and there's right? tax bill looming and that and was everything. like three thousand dollars like i can't yeah. even pay that and then there's a tax bill looming all this shit right so i'm like we're yeah we'll fuck so anyway i get these flashlights in like unbranded just this little like um white box like crappy fucking yeah. thing but they were there fulfill the orders um and I just kept looking into how these guys were getting traffic. I'm like, where are they advertising? How are they doing it? And then all the tracking links and stuff, it was all like affiliate, like through affiliate networks and stuff. Like I just like figured that out. So I was like, hang on. I'm like, these guys are just like, these are all affiliates running. So I must have an affiliate program. So I found the affiliate program. Um, had a look at like 
which networks they were on and how that was all working. Yeah. And then, so I started reaching out to networks. And um, when I did that, I had like an Australian and US version of this funnel. Um, I started reaching out and they were like, cool, like the flashlight stuff, like that's been done, right? Like this wave happened fucking three years ago. Yeah. Like, you know, you're, th- you're three years late to the party. And I was like, okay, right. So I was like, Don't, like maybe this is all failing. But then there were like, um, there was multiple networks. They're like, but in like France and in Latam, so like Argentina yeah. and stuff right now, like it can work. It can work really well. Um, can you do something like that? And I was like, well, yeah, like we've been selling, we've been like doing international fulfillment for the last two years. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't see why not, right? Like it can work. So um, this network, and I won't mention the name of the network, but it was like a, the, the guy that owns owned this network doesn't exist anymore is like has a pretty bad reputation in the industry okay. I didn't know this at the time um, and he was like man if you can build me like a Spanish translated version of this funnel for LATAM and if you can fulfill there and all this stuff is like I can get you like two three hundred sales a day you know and I'm like wait he's, he's like two three hundred a day and I was like eight clicks or sales and he was like sales and I was like oh shit like okay this like you know average order value is like hundred and forty dollars or something I'm like yeah. that's some that's some decent fucking, you know, this is what we need right now. So, um, he's like, can you do this? I'm like, yeah. So what happened was, um, within like 48 hours, I had a fully translate, like fully professionally Amazing. translated sales funnel in Spanish and the sales customer service rep, like, uh, sorry, Spanish customer service rep ready to go. Um, luckily because one of my best friends who I share an office with, uh, owns a translation company and they do oh, accredited. Perfect. So he has experience like translating websites and doing yeah. it right and making sure it all works and, that was actually um that was a big part of how we've been successful with all these like international e-commerce is like super fucking good translations. Yeah. Um, L- fully localized, culturally yeah. specific. Yes. Yes. And a lot like... of people use like these little like um like freelancer websites for mm-hmm. translations and like you're getting like really poor quality stuff done. It's just yeah. not going to convert. And as soon as you can tell, it's not like you read anything that's yeah. in like English you know, or something, yeah. right? You well, can tell. What's hilarious is like affiliates would translate our like French funnel for like our flashlight brand, it was Lumify flashlights. So they'd translate that into English and then like run it in Australia and then I'd see the ads and the English is so poor and I'm like, oh my God, dude, like, just, like, That's what is hilarious. this? Yeah. Um, and we never got those conversions because like, it yeah. just wouldn't work. Um, but anyway, so within like 48 hours, I messaged this guy at the network back, I'm like, here you go. And he was like, whoa, like, that was fast. And I was like, yep, yeah, let's do this, you know? And then, um, yeah, so like we got it all uploaded and he was like, oh, so um, can we do like sub ID tracking? And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> Google, yeah. what's a sub ID? And then like, I'm reading all the shit and I'm like, I kind of still didn't get it. I'm like, uh, not really, man. And he's like, oh yeah, it's like just place this pixel on your confirmation page then. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool, did that. And then he's like, yeah, traffic should start in like two, three days. I'm like, sweet. And then like, I call my business partner. I'm like, dude, I'm like, this all happened actually like, that like when he reached out and we had this whole conversation it was like midnight I was like at home curled up on my couch and the laptop and I, I saw the Skype message and I was like I was just about falling asleep and I was like thinking like yeah I'll miss messaging back in the morning and I'm like wait no 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 like yeah. I'll sleep when I'm fucking dead like I'm doing this shit now so like I said it was like 4am that night like getting everything ready and then wow. I'm like fuck this like we're doing it so anyway call my business partner I'm like dude like sh- like it's done it's fixed like, we're set. Like, it's, it's not a problem, right? Like, just get ready. And he's like, what do you mean, blah, blah, Like, just, just, just get ready, you know? And then, so we wait like a week. No traffic. I message him again. No traffic. No traffic. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, this guy's probably talking shit. Like, yeah. No, but I was like, damn it. But, um, but it gave me enough drive to, like, keep pushing. So, um, so I kept trying to run traffic myself. And then um, reached out to some more networks. And then ended up with... Um, Affiliax. Okay. Um, so like those guys, like yeah, friends of the six week affiliate mastery challenge. Affiliax, big shout out. There you go. Uh, no, like, awesome, awesome guys. Um, so they were like, yeah, like I'm like here, I got the Spanish version. Like can do a French version. I'm like already on it. So like doing the French version. Um, we upload all the offers, and um, yeah, like within literally within a week, like we just started getting sales and it started at, like ten sales a day for like a few days and 20, 30, 50, 100, 200, 300, like. Just, it was insane. With right? those AOVs of 150, 100 150 bucks? bucks wow. Yeah, so like, we'll make, like from the start, we're making like $10,000 a day wow. almost, you know, like within the, that first few weeks of testing. Um, and I was like, like, holy shit. And like one of my best friends who I live with is like a housemate. He was, um, he was like, 
he went away like the day I started the like the day traffic was supposed to start. He yeah. went on this trip. He came like five days later and he called me. He's like, hey, how did the flashlight thing? I'm like, dude, we've done like $60,000 in sales. He's like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, wait, what? Like, how is this even possible? And then, um, yeah. And then, so that was like April. No, when was that? Like, yeah, like maybe June, July, by the time we started getting traffic. All this started like January 2015. 15, okay. Yeah. Um, or 16. I'm so bad at dates and times. It's <laughs> fucking ridiculous. I think it was 15. Anyway, and then, um, so we ended up like, basically, where was that? What's my train of thought? Uh, 60 grand in five 60 days. 60 grand in five days. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So then as we led to like November, December, like, we're like, can we do like the Netherlands? Can we do this? Can we do that? Blah, blah, blah. And like all these other networks are hitting me up. Do you and have proper affiliate tracking at this point yet? Or are you still yeah, just relying so, so on the I networks? Got, I, I, I got cake. I got, cake, okay. I got cupcake, the, nice. uh, the, the, the basic cake, basic order they call it. it used to be called cupcake. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that was switched to the full version, but okay. like, um, yeah. So then I figured out the whole tracking thing nice. and all that. And it was all good. And tons of networks hitting us up, tons of affiliates hitting us up. And, um, we just kept like, just kept scaling. Like we went from like my business partner was fulfilling these flashlights from his garage. Um, like at the start. And then like within a month we went and like rented a warehouse, yeah. um, in Melbourne? In Melbourne, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Went, rented a warehouse. We started getting like really good rates with DHL, um, DHL e-commerce, which is like the uh, Australian DHL, well, they're worldwide, but it's for like exporting, so it's like only international. Okay. So um, we ended up being their number one, like their biggest client in Australia. So it was pretty funny because they actually send all of their products like from Sydney yeah. to their like destination country. And then like from there, they use like the local like countries like postal system. Um, so what happened was like, they were telling us that like, we've actually, we actually had to like get another truck onto our fleet just to handle your shit because like going from Melbourne to Sydney, they couldn't keep up. Yeah. So, you know, we're sending like seven to eight pallets a day, like out of our warehouse. It was crazy. Yeah. So like this all happened, like we had to hire, I think at the time it was like three or four guys working six days a week, purely just like packing orders. Right. And this all had to happen within a month. Yeah. Right. So what do you account for this? Is this that like, how come were these other, because it was a three-year-old trend or whatever, yeah. had those other businesses just not really tried to crack this market or was it just um, that the appetite there was so insatiable that it was just like, it, you know, a lot of people were, were going to these other markets. <clears throat> to be honest, like there was a lot of like, are you talking about like com- competitive flashlight yeah, like, brands? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there was a few, there was like three like, or four. How come this did time? so well for you? Like how, how come in, in international, like how come international yeah. markets hadn't been cracked? Um, a lot of the guys like, a lot of advertisers come into the space and they can do well for like a couple of months mm-hmm. and then they get merchant problems and they disappear. Yeah. Um, internationally, it's hard because packages take like three weeks or so, sometimes yeah. more depending on customs to get into the country. And then when that happens, like you, your charge rate ratio is higher. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's that simple. Um, so you can't really rely on like standard, like PayPal or whatever. Like yeah. Just, you know, so what we did is like we built like a really good relationship with uh, a bank in Australia and like explained everything we're doing, exactly how we're doing it. And they were like really good with a lot. We had to give them like a ridiculously high reserve to be able to process the transactions we did. Okay. But it just, yeah, we're just like really open, transparent. Like we're not scamming anyone. Like this is what we're doing. And this came from the previous business you had built. Like came from, you, you know, you understanding that aspect of having well, to take care of that. Yeah. Well, well, actually what came from the other business was more about like like customers matter and yeah. like making sure we actually looked after our customers. That's the other thing. Like a lot of advertisers come in and it's like, they're used to being like, I don't know, like affiliates or they just want to do this like online stuff and not yeah. deal with humans. Churn, right? churn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I mean, customer service for us with like the T brand and all that was like our like KPI on that was like 100%. Like every customer has to be yeah. 100% satisfied no matter what. Yeah. Every email has to be responded to within 24 hours, things like that. So that's why it was so important. That's why I had like so much customer service like backing set up before we even launched the traffic, like before I gave the okay to the affiliate. Yeah. It was like, no, no, we need to make sure that like every customer is happy. Um, every customer is not happy at this scale. No, it's impossible. And with international long shipping times and stuff, it, it's, it's definitely impossible. Um, so I'll get to how the flashlight thing went down uh, in, in a moment. Okay. It's, it's related to, to that. But um. So anyway, so yeah, it was just crazy. Like literally like within a month, we go from fulfilling from a garage to having four staff packing full time, six days a week, biggest DHL client in Australia, yep. 
all this shit. I'm dealing with all these affiliate stuff. My business partner is doing all the like hiring all these customer service reps. We needed like French, Spanish, German, Italian. Um, and I'm just building funnels, like just new funnels, like new landing pages, new everything. And um, all we needed to do is like, I think our international stuff was converting better than the competitor stuff. And I think a lot of it to do was with good translations. Yeah. Um, and having the cap, like our, our merchant facilities allowed us to do like almost unlimited caps. So we gained a lot of affiliates. And then there was a few flashlight guys that kind of came in and out and had periods where they had to pause. When they pause, a lot of those affiliates came to us they already had everything worked out, so they just switched their branding from whatever it was to our branding um, and just scaled hard. So then in December and January, um, we did like, we were doing about a million dollars a week in revenue. <laughs> yeah, it was Jesus crazy. Christ. Yeah, I think our record day, like I was in, um, I was in New York. Um, yeah, I was in New York and I was like logged in and we're checking in, like it was scaling so hard and we were doing like $100,000 days and I was like, Fuck man, I went from like literally like six hundred bucks, six hundred bucks or whatever, I'm like just left. stressing the fuck out. Yeah, and I'm like, now we're doing six figure days, and I was like, when I started the whole thing, when I was like, in that like give up stage of my life, I'm like, I either give up completely, because this feels like shit, or like the only way to stop feeling shit is like fix it. I'm like, I want to do ten grand a day. Like if I can do ten thousand dollars a day, I'm like, that's you know that's like my aim. Um, to do it consistently with like at least a 50% margin or whatever. That was like kind of where I was at. And then, yeah, I guess like don't aim low. Like definitely like whatever you think you should be making, like times that by 10 and make that your goal. Um, Cause yeah, like now, like anything under a hundred thousand dollars a day, I feel like I'm failing, <laughs> which sounds so fucked up. Um, but it's true. I mean, that's what happens. Like I literally feel like if I'm doing under a hundred thousand dollars a day, I'm like, shit, like I'm underperforming here. Like we need to step up our game. We need to do yeah. something. And our margins aren't great. Like we're not doing 50% margins. Like mm. we're like, I always aim for like a 20% margin. Um, lately it's probably been a little bit less than that, but okay. yeah, if uh, 20% is like safe and I feel like that's like a, a business that can run um, anything less than that, I will cut that offer. Um, yeah. So, so had you formed direct offer club at this point? Mm. Cool. No. no so that okay. was just Lumify flashlights yeah. at the time. And then, um, and then what started happening was almost 90% of the traffic we we're getting was from Taboola and Outbreak. All right. And, um, what happened was, um, uh, the, the main, like the premium publisher sites that these ads were running on were, um, receiving complaints about customers. The customers like emailing, like whatever the fucking... MSNs of France yeah. <laughs> saying, um, you know, I haven't received my order. This is a scam, blah, blah, from like multiple flashlight brands. And um, eventually what happened was like to pull stuff like, well, we're going to have to knock these off these premium sites. So they started yeah. like stopping them serving on those sites. And then that like dropped significantly. Yeah. And then it kind of picked up again and things were figured out. And then it got to the point, like maybe a few months later where to was like, all right, in the next week, we're banning all flashlight campaigns. Doesn't matter what the brand is, doesn't wow. matter anything, like if it's a, like zero flashlights across the whole network. And we're just like, fuck. <laughs> so they did that in France first, it wasn't worldwide. So like France went down and that was like 60% of our revenue. Like, don't, like, whatever. I was happy, right? I was like, you know what? Like, even months earlier, I'm like, if this shit stops now, yeah. I'm happy. Like, it was a win. It's, it's a, a win. Big fucking yeah, yeah. win. I'm like, yeah. I'll figure out the next thing. Like, yeah, I've got yeah. enough money now to like at least like get us by. Like, I'm not stressed about it. Yeah. I can take my time. Didn't I've been it. through this. I've been yeah. through the low already. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and, and, and it, it, it didn't really phase me. I was like, you That's know what? Good. Like, we literally dropped sixty percent of our revenue overnight, and I was like, okay, we did all right. <laughs> and then, um, but then you know, other countries picked up. So then we started running them in other countries and kept doing that. And then eventually, like, it all kind of died down. Um, and then now I'll talk about direct off club in a moment, but sure. I'll talk about the flashlight game right now in the affiliate space. Um, the reason why our, like we do like right now, we're probably doing like 20 to 30 conversions a day okay. on flashlights. That's it. Yeah. Um, and the reason is there's other flashlight offers in the space that affiliates are making like much higher EPCs on. Um, because they're more aggressive or because aggressive is like an understatement. Yeah. Right. So what's happening is, and this is where like, like I have, like everyone has their own like boundary, like moral boundary, yeah. right? Like where they draw a line and there's no right or wrong. Like mine might be like here, yours might be like there or yeah. there or whatever, right? So like, I'm not like judging anyone for doing whatever they do, but the way the flashlight offers are set up right now is like way, like way above where I like cut it, right? 
so like continuity or something well or? yeah con- it's continuity but it's like yeah so it's like it, it's like the whole like diet thing but yeah. like with <sighs> who needs monthly flashlights it's not even that <laughs> it's it's nothing so like okay so i won't say the brand name or anything but the guys that are doing like six seven hundred conversions a day right now good on them like honestly good on them like they're making it work and they're yeah. making it last so like that's it's, it's good right but essentially you buy a you buy the initial offer it's like a one flashlight i think and it's like 39 dollars, and you get like a battery and a little kit or whatever and then um you yeah so once you've purchased um the next upsell is a like batteries or whatever it's fine no problem straight sale the next upsell is like join our vip club and it's like you know there's like vip club memberships you yeah. get like discounts on other products it's like eight or nine dollars a month it gets built to your card um if you tick no on that if you actually say no to that you still get subscribed tested this thoroughly yeah um and then if uh, and then you get to the next page which is your confirmation page all good but on that confirmation page it's like actually i don't even think they mentioned this on the confirmation page they may or may not but when you get your confirmation email it's like oh there's also like nine dollars 95 for shipping which is not mentioned anywhere else yeah. and there is also like an eight dollars something uh tax right which is like not mentioned anywhere right and then so they're doing the whole like merchant account rotating thing you know multiple yeah. transactions blah, blah blah so applying that whole model um and it's working for them good for them we can't keep up with your, that. And your line is a little bit different. Morally, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, good for them. Like, and, and I don't think it's sustainable. Like, yeah, I think even just like a month ago, it was like a massive issue with a whole bunch of mid accounts getting shut down for that yeah. type of shit with the neutral and all that. But um, yeah, so I guess that um, there, so from there, like we were like, even like months before this, we're like, we need to be doing other products and like repeating this model with other things. So we started building all these other brands and we had like Think Smart breathalyzers in France. That did really well. We had like um, these like electronic lighters. You see, there's like arc lighters. We did that. We did um, TV streaming boxes. We've done, uh, right now we're doing like Nomad Backpack, which is like an anti-theft backpack. Um, we've had like universal wrenches and tools and like yep. all these different things. And they've all done quite well. Like some of them, fail. like a lot of them like that we like test won't work, but the yep. ones that work, like they do well. Like it's good. So then I was like, hang on, this is just a mess. I've got like this like, cake tracking software that's like kind of Lumify branded and we've done all these things and affiliates and affiliate networks kind of know us as Lumify but then, then they kind of know we have other stuff yeah I was like let's just make direct offer club and just like we're just a direct e-commerce advertiser building offers for networks and for affiliates and that's what's different this is what's, what was so interesting when you came to Facebook Elite Retreat is you're like you, you kind of come full circle yeah. in a way because most people that I know of anyways think of yeah. getting into this business by you know, building stores, running traffic, fig- figuring out that whole thing. Yep. You kind of came into it uh, with the affiliate strategy and now yep. you're realizing, okay, rather than relying on affiliates, let's build an internal team as well. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So um, having an internal team is really good in the sense that like we can really fiddle with like different pricing models and test. Yeah. And test your funnels stuff. more. At, you know, you can, exactly. You can, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. That And then like, so like on top of that, like one like big like mistake, like, not really a mistake, like, it was more just, like, we just didn't have the resources and time to do it, but, like, we didn't even have retargeting, like, internal retargeting set up on all this traffic, right? So, we're getting, like, fucking, out. we got media buyers spending ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a day, like, multiple, on these offers, so, like, we're getting tons and tons of traffic. All we needed to do was, like, place a Facebook pixel, set up some retargeting campaigns, would have made a fuck ton more money, would have had good audiences, all that shit. Um, so, that we're building out now, and, like, I'm trying to, like, hire more people and, like, do more things to allow me to have time to actually really sit down and figure out like Facebook and native. Like I just yeah. want to like really, really like dedicate my personal time learning that. Um, again, it's like that whole thing where like, yeah, okay, you can hire someone to kind of do this, but I, I just want to do it myself first. Yeah. Learn it. And then once I've figured it out and optimize it, I'll hire people to do it my way. Um, so yeah, so working towards that now, um, having internal team, internal media buying, running our own offers. Um, nice. But yeah. And then I guess this kind of brings us to like, the next topic that we wanted to talk about which is like where is e-commerce going yeah uh, where is like performance based e-commerce going exactly so when we, you know we're, we're planning right e-commerce mastery live right now uh, the big event in Barcelona on July 20th and we're sort of like the way we see it it's it's there's there's multiple ways you can sort of take the e-commerce e-commerce is, uh, is just means buying shit online 
Yeah. And so there's all sorts of ways you can do that. The one way is what like uh, the Tans and Muhammad Ali Agel do, which is like it's it's the store game, right? It's the general yeah. it's the store game where you're not yeah. really focusing on a brand necessarily. Yeah. You're trying a lot of products and you're you're building up that aspect. Then there's what what you've done, which is kind of like that, but with yeah. affiliates. Yeah. There's building brands out yourself, and then there's just running stuff like your affiliates do. There's just running yeah. stuff rather than building fulfillment centers and yeah. customer service teams and translation teams. You just basically get really good at running ads to other to other people's products who've already figured all this stuff out. Yep. So exactly uh, right. so I'm curious. So there's a lot of stuff happening in e-commerce. Uh, there's a lot of uh, news about what's happening with the news feed and the way. Uh, you know how drop shippers is getting harder and harder for their businesses. So that's what you, that's what we've spent yeah. a lot of time talking about while you've been here is like where you feel the future of e-commerce is. So, so yeah. riff on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'll just say like straight up now, like I don't know the actual answer to it. Like I don't think anyone really knows like the actual answer. Yeah. But like the long term, like ten years from now, like who knows, right? But what we do know is like ten years from now, like offers. Like a lot of popular offers on these networks, like outside of ecom, like all these sweepstakes and all these like neutral stuff and all this shit, yeah. like cloaking. And... I don't really know if that's going to be around yeah. in the next ten years. And I know, like, if you look back, right, like that's been around forever, and there's always been these talks of like this shit's going to stop. Like, there's all these new algorithms yeah. coming out. Affiliate marketing is dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and like, it, it's, there's always going to be a way. Like, hackers will always find a way to like break through, right? Yeah. Every single time. But I do think that we're at a point, you know, in the next two years or so, like up until now like machine learning and AI and stuff like wasn't yeah a thing and like biometric like um like you got your fingerprint readers on phones you got yeah. face recognition now with the new iPhone and stuff like that this shit wasn't a thing back then like I know like Facebook I actually just read an article like Facebook just acquired a, a company um like a biometric like facial recognition company right so it's like well all these like farmed accounts and stuff eventually you know not be possible and like you know what i mean yeah, like totally. she's like because they're investing just, in ai but they're also investing yeah. in humans like a huge like their 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 revenues or their yeah. costs are going way up because yeah. they're hiring so many more people to get on this physically and then yeah. building ais around what they're yeah, learning exactly and... right yeah so i feel like it is going to get to a point where it's it is like it'll overtake right yeah like machine learning and ai shit like we, we won't be able to keep up with that um and then that's like on the running traffic side, but then on the affiliate side, like as well, like if you're doing all these like merchant, um, uh, like cascading and if you're, if you're like, um, like rotating mids and load balancing and all that sort of stuff and like doing this dodgy shit, I mean like Visa and MasterCard and stuff, like all that shit's getting cracked down on as well, right? Yeah. Like that, I don't see that really being a thing. In 10 years from now. Okay. Right. But now talk about drop shipping. Talk about even the, the very basics of people wanting yeah. to jump into e-commerce yeah, so, now. Yeah. Okay. So I'll get to e-commerce. That was just yeah. more just like yeah. the shitty network stuff, right? But yeah. like e-com. So everyone's now like kind of stressing out and they're like, we need to like build brands and this drop shipping thing's fucked and affiliates are like, wait, I'm an affiliate. I do like CPA stuff and then I don't own the customer or anything. And then like ads are getting more expensive. And they're like, shit, I need to build my own store and I need to build my own brand. Yeah. So, so you can own your audience better. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that's the kind of general vibe I'm getting now from the whole industry is like that's where people are kind of freaking out and they're like all these affiliates that are doing Black Hat or or anything, even running e-commerce stuff is like, shit, no, I need to build my own stores and like do all this myself. Um, now, okay, so I think what the most important thing is like the primary goal of the, of the e-commerce space right now is lifetime customer value. That doesn't mean branding, right? Necessarily, no. So, so branding is like one method or one tactic or thing that should be applied to lifetime customer value. Yeah. But really, like if like at the end of the day, everyone's like, oh, shit, you need a brand. It's like, no, no, no. You need the lifetime customer value. And a brand could or could not be part of that. Yes. Right? Right now. Yeah. Right? So this is on the advertiser side, by the way. I'll get to affiliates in a moment and yeah. why they don't need a stress. Um, so as an advertiser or as a store owner, if you are building, um, if you're building out a store and you're getting customers, you need to make sure like one, like the biggest, the biggest problem with low quality e-commerce right now is, um, is shipping times, right? Yeah. So the reason why customers are unhappy is shipping times. 90%. Yeah. Right. Product quality for the most part, if you're doing it right, like it's not, it's customers are happy with their products. Yeah. They just don't want to wait a month for it to arrive. And they want to be somewhat like, they want to have like a nice package or something, yeah. right? Like, you know, that doesn't mean you need a brand. It just means like, give them a good experience, right? Yeah. Like they might be well aware they're getting a 
little tech gadget product from China, but yeah. they just want it to arrive quickly and they want it to work well. Um, and the working well part, like for the most part, like with us, we test every single product before we sell them. So like we'll get multiple samples in, we'll find the best one, make sure the pricing works. And you have such a good experience with your producers and stuff like that as well that you know, you know, you, you yeah. can trust them more or less. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so you just got to make sure you sell stuff that's like as advertised. Mm -hmm. um, definitely as advertised. So don't be too aggressive. And then um, it's honestly like it's 90% shipping times. Yeah. And, you know, com communication. Like you... you we respond to all customer service emails within 24 hours. Like it's just, it's a must. Yeah. Um, and if you can keep that customer happy on the first time they buy, then you need to work on like how to keep selling to that customer, or like with your emails, with your Facebook list and stuff like that. And if that's the case, you're going to do well. I believe that if like in the next two years or so, like the way media spends are going, like Facebook ads are saying it's going up 30% a year and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, if that is the case, then it will get to the point for sure where you're not going to make a profit off your first sale. That's interesting. Right? This is not going to happen. The only way e-commerce and direct response will make money is like making money off existing customers that have been happy. Yes. Right? So, and again, I'm not saying you have to build a brand. It's good to build a brand, but like you need to somewhat be able to resell to these customers. In a way, do you need a brand? Because if you're going to sell, like, because there's some products that you need more of again and again, but yeah. there's other ones where you want to be like, hey, another great product from... Ronco or whatever, yeah, exactly. right? So yeah, it's like yeah. they're, they're that in that way, I can see a brand being beneficial. Exactly right. Yeah. So like, it just depends how like how much dedication you want to like focus yeah. on like the brand name and stuff. But you know, yeah, as essentially you want to you want to get that lifetime customer value up. So that's one having way a brand. To do it. Having a brand is good, but you you don't do that though. You don't. You're not like direct offer club to no. consumers, right? No, no. We so, have like gadget tech trends. That's like okay. one of our sites. So like we play on that. Most of our offers like are sold through gadget tech trends. So okay. we can kind of like. Have a centralized nice and have a way. newsletter for new products on the gadget tech trends. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly right. So that's like somewhat of brand building, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean shit unless your customers are super happy and yeah. You know, yeah. So um so again, it's like everything you do, like the goal should be lifetime customer value. Um and that's where like in this space, affiliates right now are kind of scared because like ad spends are going up and like these are the CPAs and then we're not gonna make profit anymore, right? So they're freaking out, like we've yeah. got to get into drop shipping and shit. Well, it's like no, like the affiliates don't actually need to stress at all. It's the advertisers and the store owners that need to stress because they need to make sure that they can afford to buy customers and then make money off them, right? That's right. Whereas all that means is in the affiliate space, affiliate guys running e-com and Legion or whatever it is, they will be getting paid higher because advertisers like us, right? You think about it, right? Yeah, I was thinking about because I was wondering if you're trying to say that you're not going to make money off the first purchase, yeah. how are affiliates ever going to make money? But but no. it's but you got to go up the yeah. chain to do the affiliate advertisers. marketing will always exist, right? Yeah. It's like they're media buyers. Like if they just like they focus on the media buying and then we focus on running the business and making that money on the back end. That's what the whole thing's all about, yeah. right? So the people that need to stress are like me, yeah. right? Not the affiliates because all that happens is like in two years from now, let's say I've got this current setup and I'm paying a sixty dollars CPA like per conversion on this. I need to be able to pay eighty dollars. That's the stress. Yeah. Right. Because exactly. if I pay eighty dollars, that affiliate's going to make money. Yep. Right? And so he'll keep running and run he'll keep volume. Running, and... Right? and if I don't pay eighty dollars, and then some other e-commerce guy is like doing it better, and he can afford to spend eighty dollars, I lose. Yeah. Right. And then I'm fucked. The affiliates are fine because there's going to be someone that does it. Right. There's going to be multiple people that do it. So like the affiliates have no problem. And so affiliates need to find advertisers who have their back end sorted out. Exactly. In a way, right? Yeah, which will happen, right? Yeah. So like the net, like they'll be on networks, they'll be around, like it'll be a thing. So, I, I, yeah, affiliates don't need to stress. Just keep doing what you're doing. Focus. If if you want to be a media buyer, and you don't have to worry about fucking merchant processing and yeah. customer service, fulfilling and in your garage. All that stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to do that, then like you like don't like yeah. if you're a media buyer, just keep buying media. Be good at it. Be the best at it, so that when times change, you have that competitive edge. Yeah. And then. You know, the e-commerce guys, like, there'll be a few that will follow. Yeah. They have to, right? It'll just, this is part of, like, adapting to the whole process. Is like, making it clean. If you can get a good lifetime value out of that customer, you know, like, even if you're losing $20 on that sale, like, eventually you're going to make that money back yeah. um, down the track. So, yeah, it's us that need to stress, not the That's super interesting. Do you ever think about, uh, about, like, are you an affiliate network yourself? Or do you just always rely on other affiliate networks? Well, we rely on other affiliate networks, but we also have, like, our own little like yeah. direct offer club, like it's our own little affiliate yeah. network, I guess. We don't run other people's offers. Like we don't have anyone else's yeah. stuff on our network. It's, it's just, just your stuff. It's purely our own e-commerce products. Um, so every time there's a new product, we build a sales funnel and, and offer out of that product. 
and then we do multiple geos and then we put that out to the affiliates that run it. And stuff. increasingly you test it yourself as well. Well, now we're starting to do yeah. that a lot more and more. We've, we have really good retreat. relationships with a few guys that actually, yeah, since Elite Retreat. Um, nice. Yes, definitely. That was like the most, I'll talk about that later, but Elite Retreat, like this mastermind that um, iStack set up, it was like, yeah, probably one of the best things I've ever done Wow. in my life in terms of like just realizing like, you know, there's always like different stepping stones. It's like I got to a point now where I kind of be like, oh yeah, cool. We're like successful. We're doing this. We're doing that. Then I came to Elite Retreat and I was like, hold on, like everything need i'm actually like what happened after this mastermind like i went home and i was like i'm more than happy to not make any money for the next six months like i'll literally shut down the whole business i'll just like fight like fire everyone shut down the whole business we're done and start from scratch and just build things up the way i want to do it to like scale harder wow. like that that's where i was at i was like i don't even care like yeah i want this and we're here right now and we need to change so much shit so like I want to take a step back and, and build this properly. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it was really good. Wow. Really good. Um, highly recommended. Okay, well, thank um, you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, where was I at? So, yeah, we run as like a like a direct affiliate network. Yeah. And we have but it's not really a big focus for you. Um, it actually is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh, definitely, definitely a big focus. So, there's two things we're focusing on. Like, one is obviously like making sure our customers are happy. Yep. We're doing... Uh, some crazy stuff with logistics right now so that we can pretty much like ship to like any main country that we sell to like within four or five days and wow yeah so like getting all that set up um just yeah getting that customer satisfaction like back to the level of like what it was when we had a brand you know like we want like less than one percent of people complaining like yeah. it's we want to like really nail that and then um and and be able to like nurture these customers and make money off them because like i said in two years time me paying sixty dollars per offer like i'm gonna need to be paying eighty dollars per offer yeah you know, to keep these affiliates happy. Um, so you got to keep your customers yeah. happy and you got to yeah, yes. sell to them over their lifetime. Exactly right. The other stress mm-hmm. affiliates have right now um, in the whole space is like, they feel like there's all this talk of like, oh, if you're an affiliate, like it's not a real business. Like you're just getting that CPA again. Like you don't own the customer. You don't actually own anything. Yeah. You're not doing it. You're anything. renting rather than owning. You're renting yeah. rather than owning, right? So there's affiliates like shit. Like, no, I need to build my own business. Like I need to, that's why they're getting into dropshipping. You know, yeah. it's like, I need to like, I need to have this something that can like grow and nurture and roll. Um, but there's two things with that. Like it's, it's a good, it's a good idea. Right. But one, like, unless you're buying media on that thing, it's going to fail anyway. Right. Yeah. Like how many people you talk to with a job shooting business that you say, if you turned off all your ads right now, are you going to be making money in six months? No, no. I don't. Pff, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, that's one. But what I was getting at is like affiliates, like them, your, your media buyers. Right. So like, Who's to say you can't build a business, a media buying business? Yeah. Right? An like, agency. An agency, right? Yeah. Or whatever. Like a media buying team. Like some of the affiliates we're doing with right now, like they've hot they start up as an affiliate themselves and they hired one, two, three people. They have a whole team, like a whole media buying team that know direct response, right? Yeah. That is a business, right? So in two years time from now, when like people are struggling to make money online because everything's so expensive and they don't know shit about buying anything online, how valuable is that gonna be? Yeah. Right? Like you being able to say, like, hey, we can we can like support like what like big budgets yeah. right for your store or for whatever it is you're doing and we'll make it profitable or for right. whoever whatever big brands move into exactly. performance marketing exactly. right and that's yeah. the big thing we talk about all yeah. the time is performance marketing and the rising tide yeah. and if you're an expert performance exactly. media buyer yeah that's a good it's like you should be building in. a media buying business like you don't have to get into like whatever offer you're running you don't have to get into that yeah and then run that i mean you can it's good like do it like whatever like we run a very successful e-commerce store as an advertiser it's definitely just that's that's where i'm at but what i'm saying is and that's only because i don't know how to buy media and that's not my thing yeah um if you're a good media buyer and that's what you like doing build a media buying company and there's other assets you can build within there you know yeah. one of my our fav- my favorite example sell that company i can't yeah. sell my company well, look right at straw house now. look at it's straw straw house has built a 80 million dollar or they did 80 million dollars in three years or whatever mm-hmm. and they've done it on media buying Mm-hmm. They basically run offers. They were, yeah. you know, they ran Tracker, yeah. and now they're building. I, I won't let the cat out of the bag too much, but they're building media buying tools that allowed them to do these amazing things. If you can build yeah. technology around media buying and the, exactly and right. the nexus of and, yeah. and media buying and e-commerce, yeah. that's an incredibly saleable asset. Definitely, definitely. You know, exactly right. So like, it's yeah, it's such a wrong, it's such a misconception, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm an affiliate. Like, I don't. So own chill company. out, affiliates. Chill Just... out, relax. Like, yeah, build a fucking media buying company. Like, yeah. that's going to be the most valuable, like, in this whole online space, the most valuable people in two years now when everyone's stressing the fuck out are the ones that can still do it. Amazing. I wanted to ask you, do you still, like, 
you're almost all direct response at this point, but do you still invest anything into in, in, in the influencer space for any of your brands? No. No. Um, no. Something that's on the agenda for 2018. Okay. Yeah, yeah definitely. Very cool. Um, so there's like little niche brands I want to build out as well, like the way we're doing things. Um, if it's a particular product that I like that it's in like a niche, like, like right now we're doing this like nomad backpack and it's like an yep. anti-theft travel backpack, which made me think like maybe I should build like nomad into like a little travel brand and we can do like different accessories for travel and digital nomads and stuff yeah. like that which is something i'm passionate about yeah you are one. um yeah so it was like this, this could work you know now we're getting like we're getting traffic in through direct response and then we can like probably nurture these people and build out a social media influencer stuff and like get back into that whole space um human resources are tight right now so like that's kind of hard like it's probably gonna take a bit of time but um how many that would be employees? a passion that would be a passion uh full-time one, two, three. It's probably about five full timers, and then there's a bunch of. It's incredible revenue. There's a bunch probably of remote, the amount of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a bunch of uh, like remote customer service reps and stuff yeah. like that. So it's actually funny. Like my business partner does all the operations of the business. So like he manages like our warehouse staff, our customer service teams, yeah. everything. He deals with all the suppliers at this point. And um, I literally just build funnels and try and get like traffic in. Yeah. So like he'll be hiring and mixing people around. I don't even know their fucking names at this point. Like some of them, like nice. I don't even know who they are. And that's a good lesson too about just sort of like splitting your focus into what you're good yeah, at and just tr- tr- having definitely. a partner you trust, obviously. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, well, we've been. Is this the same partners. partner? This is the same partner. The same like, partner. So yeah. we went to high school together, and then um, yeah, we started our first like TV installation business together, and like it's been that journey the whole time. Nice. Um, so like normally I would say like don't have a business partner. Yeah. Um. In the sense that like a lot of business partnerships fail and usually yeah. a lot of like, you know, this is the whole thing. But uh, in this particular case, like we just, yeah, we've always like, we're always on the same wavelength. We have the same goals, outcomes and like, he's like fucking super smart. He's like 10 times smarter than I am. I just like, I'm just a fucking hustler. Like I just don't give up. But he's yeah. like super smart and switched on. So we have our like, up, like advantages, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, separating things are like super key. With the Instagram business, we're doing the same thing most of the time. We're like, we'll just do the same thing, but like double the output, yeah. which is like the dumbest thing ever. Um, and the worst thing about that as well is like, you have to separate operations from business development because whoever's doing business development and if they're also doing operations, the more like work they bring in, the harder their job gets. Yeah. Right? So like, this isn't just for stuff. This is for yourself, like a psychological thing. Like back in the day, like when I first started the, the tea business, like I was the one fulfilling the orders. Yeah. So like every time we'd get like, we'd scale up it's like shit there goes my so fucking weekend fucking yeah. Work to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah and like which is good because it's exciting but yeah. at the same time like it's a barrier like it holds you back and then when we outsourced that it was like full force like fuck it I want to get as many as we fucking can yeah. like I don't even care like, I'm not even, yourself. I'm not even yeah. touching it anymore you know what I mean like so yeah it's uh, that that operations and um and business development definitely needs to be separated Very even cool. if it's just you yourself Nice. Yeah. So I think we've actually, is there any, we've, we've gone long. This is, uh, usually we do about 40 minutes or over an hour, but in person, time just flies. Were there any other like key learnings you wanted to get out? Um, key just learnings? To put you on the spot? I don't know. Like any other, like you've, you've given away a ton of value in this. I think people just sort of like following your journey and understanding. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think, and that, and what we've talked about affiliates is super interesting Yeah. Uh, yeah. in the space. If people want to get in touch with you, if they want to like run your offers or whatever, yeah. what do you recommend? Yeah, just um, get in touch with me. Just like send me an email, add me on Skype, Facebook, whatever you want. Um, I basically live my life online, so I'm always there to have a chat. So nice. just get in touch and even if you just want to have a chat and talk about anything, if it's your own business or if you're an affiliate or whatever, just get in touch. We'll have a chat. Nice. Always and you're, you're going to be in Panama coming up? I'll be in Panama, yep. So the Panama GBS Summit. Nice. Um, I think it's the second one. They did the first one last year and it was... Uh, Apparently a lot of fun and a lot of good stuff happening there. So um, yeah, should be should be great. Yeah, very cool. And then you'll be in Barcelona as well, I believe. I'll be in Barcelona for sure. Nice. Yeah, can't yeah. miss Barcelona. Definitely. Very cool. Uh, as a final thing, I want to say what what have you like? Not a lot of our audience probably has experienced Victoria, British Columbia. But what are your thoughts on spending a week in Victoria? Honestly, like, <laughs> Victoria is like one of my favorite cities in the world right now. Like oh. it's such a small little place. Like I I, I way prefer smaller cities over. Main yeah, cities. main city is like they're all kind of the same. Yeah, this is this nice little unique flair to it. And it's like everyone's super nice. And it's you've got just, you've got into just, some adventures here. We've had definitely had some crazy adventures. So. <laughs> Ask James about those. Over you'll have to you have to message me about those. I can yeah. tell you. I can tell you in private message. Um, no, nice. but yeah, it's been it's been amazing. But yeah. um, yeah, some key learnings, I guess. Like um, one thing, going from like being in a really sh- shitty situation to sort of making it work. And this has happened like several times in my life is um, 
is like I think one thing that's like super important if you're like starting out or trying to build something is like or trying to even scale something like let's say you're already successful and you want to make it to that next step is like emotional leverage so what I mean by that is like being in a position or purposely putting yourself in a situation where you don't have a choice so like like literally like back against the ropes yeah. or nothing and I feel like a lot of people that have been successful in like all aspects um, not just like this particular type of industry or anything like whatever like anything you want to do in life like if you don't have a choice like you are gonna make it work you're going to pull through yeah you know that's interesting yeah and, and that's like and I do that in a way I do that purposely like sometimes like it sounds stupid but even when we're in the tea business right like we would spend our profits like we'd spend them on purpose because we're like we want to make sure that we always have a little bit of financial aid, which is really fucking stupid you actually probably shouldn't listen yeah. to this advice <laughs> it's so contradictory put yourself in a bad yeah, situation put yourself in a fucked up situation to make good things happen to make good things happen and I, honestly like as weird as it sounds like I strongly believe that that's like a, that's like the number one fucking key to making it work that's interesting like you either it, it sucks but, but, but you, like, you do that yourself yeah. too like you're saying like when you're not yeah. making 100k a day you feel and so like that that, that scale I guess changes so. I guess so. yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean so yeah. like that sounds so pretentious no, <laughs> no I know but yeah no it's true but it's, but it, it's it, and it's something that and I think that's probably a tactic that you've de- a tactic mm. that you've developed like as your 100%. success has raised 100%, you yeah. change the scale of what feels like success and that allows you to yeah. keep driving forward exactly right like I have a friend right now sitting in another room right yeah, there right yeah yeah so he's trying to get into a into affiliate marketing and running all this stuff online. He wants to be able to travel the world and work off his laptop and all these things, right? Which is amazing. But he makes good money, mm-hmm. right? He works a full-time job. He makes fucking awesome money, Yeah, he's right? an electrician. He's an electrician, right? In Australia, that's, you know, if you're a qualified electrician, you're making good money. Like, you're making eighty to $100,000, like, anywhere. And right? you're actually helping the world work. Exactly. Which is impressive yeah, you're as you're building well, yeah. something real, yeah. yeah. So, um, anyway, so he's been trying, right? Trying. For a year now. Yeah. Right? Part time yeah. here and there, but it's not like he's not giving it a hundred percent because yeah. it's like he knows like he's just gonna go to work that week and get paid anyway, yep. right? And then like he's not even spending that money on like the Facebook ads and stuff because he's like kind of scared or yeah. whatever. And he's it's like he's got that big safety net. He's, he's got, got that big safety net. Yeah, I like guarantee you like he's a smart guy. Like you know like it's not that hard. Like a lot of these things that we all do, like it's not that hard. Yeah, it can all be figured out, right? Um, it's not like fucking brain surgery you but know? his back isn't against the wall exactly and so he hasn't like had guarantee if he quit yet. his job and like lost yeah. all his money he has like he has like all these like life savings and i was like dude dump that shit into crypto or something and just fuck with it and like <laughs> like best case like you know you make a whole bunch of money like worst case you lose everything which is fucking awesome yeah because then you're gonna have to fucking start again you know what i mean and you're gonna do it better so like yeah that's like, this is probably the worst advice no ever. I, it's really interesting yeah. it makes me, my brother actually he, he put a lot of energy into stand-up comedy uh, but he also has a wife and a kid and a successful job yeah. and all of his friends doing stand-up comedy and they're like, you're a fucking tourist. He's like, because like, you, yeah. to be a comedian, you've got to be desperately sad on the inside. You know, yeah, you've yeah, got to be, yeah, yeah, you've yeah, got to yeah. have, you know, you have too much <laughs> going for you yeah, to yeah. be a good comedian. Yes, that makes sense. Because yeah, you're not yeah. like, you're not living the, you know, the Just pain and yeah, the torture exactly. that, that, that comedians that, need. So that they get, yeah. uh, that's, it's a really interesting 100%. tip and, and yeah. one you're not going to get maybe from any other podcasts out there. So I would say so. And yeah, probably not. <laughs> so basically like anything your accountant says or like a financial advisor tells you, go and do the exact opposite of that. <laughs> Dump it into crypto. Let Please it don't ride. listen to me. Please yeah. don't listen to me. Well, buy the but, um, dip, right? Yeah, like me, like personally, that's what I do, right? Like even like my family's like, go buy a house, go do this. Like, you know, you've got all these profits, like go invest it in like something that's like solid. So, like if everything fucks up, like yeah. you, you've got something to show for it. And I'm like, I don't want to have anything to show for it. I don't. I want to have tons of experiences. Yeah. And then if shit fucks up, which it probably fucking will, when it does, I want to be fucking in the same position I was like curled up on my fucking couch. Right? So that you can be, I want to be there, reborn yeah. again. Exactly, right? And then just do it all over again. And oh like that's God. pretty much like that's I think that is like super fucking key. There's so many examples of it, right? You look at any successful person, ask them their story, they're in a position where they're fucked. Amazing. And look, it doesn't have to be that extreme, right? Like yeah. we're talking about um <clears throat> There's a guy, Tim, the Australian guy that was yeah. a mastermind with us. Tim Caldwell. Yeah. Check just, him out on YouTube. Check him out. Yeah, he's really cool. He's the funniest guy ever, right? So he was uh, did this little video explaining how he did like from zero to a million dollars in one year on Shopify. And the way he did this is first, he quit his job. He had $3,000. He took that and he went and traveled to Thailand. He was in Thailand. No job. $3,000. Starting a Shopify dropshipping store. Loved travel. Loved moving around. Yeah. Had no money. And he's like, this has to work. Right, he didn't try and do this when he had his job. Yeah, he fucking quit, and, he and that's that's like a perfect. Cheers. Thanks.